let's deal with it. But we've got but we've we got to get mentors to deal. Some of them walk them through that on a personal basis and uh, adopt them in their emotional maybe system it's not and become a servant, mother of Yes, we've got we've got multiple problems going on here. What you're describing is the is the the situation in the lower income. Uh, levels of society who are who are highly influenced by government policy with regard to welfare. What he's talking about are people who are influenced by the divorce culture and the divorce policy, which by and large is a little bit higher up the uh, higher up the uh, socioeconomic ladder. So it's so there 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 are different problems. I want to just say that uh, what you just said is completely consistent with what Phyllis Schlafly says and is consistent with what I believe. Okay, and the solution to that is. To, uh, to do something about the no-fault divorce culture in all of its manifestations. And there are many pieces to it. Okay, there are a lot of moving parts to that. And many um, fronts along which people could make some real yes. progress, some having to do with reform of custody rules um, that would, would di uh, be a little bit less incentive for a woman to do the kind of things that you're talking about, right? So shared custody has been shown to be a, a, a little bit better, right, than if she gets to walk clear and she gets plenty of, of, uh, of child support payment uh, with, no, with no accountability to, to the child's father. So shared custody is, is, is a partial solution, but we've got to do something about the, 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 the fact, the fact that uh, redefining marriage, the very, we, we're worried about redefining marriage by taking out the gender requirement, that's what we're talking about now, is removing the gender requirement for marriage, but the fact is that in 1968, we redefined marriage by removing the presumption that every marriage is permanent, and that that social experiment has been a disaster, it needs to be walked back, and if you look at what people were saying in 1968 about no fault divorce, everybody thought, oh, it's going to be it's no big deal. Kids will be fine as long as their parents are happy. We have a few studies that show that. It'll be fine. Okay? And I think that gives us every reason to be suspicious of further tamperings with the definition of marriage. But I think CPAC should do a whole panel on these questions that you brought up because Thank they're you. profound and not well known in the conservative community. Unfortunately, community. We're, we're way over time. I'm going to give Charles just 20 seconds. I, I just want to say, now. since I only have 20 seconds, I want to say this. Whenever a society is able to empower women to be compensated for having babies, to be taken care of for having babies, they're going to continue to have these babies. You know, I, I'm really in the mix of this. I know plenty of people, plenty of fathers who want to be fathers. They can't find jobs. They don't have education. I know women who can prevent pregnancies, but and I can tell you stories, meet me outside, I'll tell you a story about a young woman and her father who came to my home to, he, to, he came to my home to buy a car. You know, he could not get his daughter to go to school because the government was going to give her a two-bedroom apartment for having another child. She'd already had one child out of wedlock that was, he was raising. We need to disincentivize women having babies.